Hey everyone, this is Samuel and welcome to this week's Code Challenge. In this week's episode, we're looking to build an email template which uses the T4 code generation tool built right into Visual Studio. Now T4 stands for Text Template Transformation Toolkit. For the purposes of this example, I've created a form, it's a request a quote form, and I just wanna take you through what the actual end product looks like before we dig into code. So a user would come and they would fill in their details. I'm gonna pre-populate this to be fast. I want a really big fence and then they would hit submit. Once they hit submit, I would receive an email. So as you can see, the email template that we're using here, which we're gonna build, is nicely formatted all in HTML and it actually takes some of the user input that we sent, uh, John Doe, and the request details are, I want a really big fence. All right, so let's dig into code and see how we're gonna build this today. Okay, so in Visual Studio, I've already created a new solution called Pacific Fencing. Next, we'll go to File, New Project, and we will go under the Web Templates and select ASP Web Application. All right, so I have my new ASP.NET MVC project called Pacific Fencing.site, and I'm going to actually do a build so that it can, let's just make sure everything came through well and once we're done with that we're going to move on the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go and add a new class library uh, which i want to use to make sure that i have a clean separation between my presentation logic and my business logic so at this point my my solution looks very simple i have one mvc site in here and i have another project for my business logic when I build and run the project, this is the default look that the MVC framework gives me in terms of look and feel. Now personally, this doesn't look bad, but I honestly would like something a little flashier. So let's go to Bootswashed. If you're not familiar with the site, this is a site where you can get free themes for Bootstrap. I'm going to go all the way down and select the superhero theme. And so let's take a look at how this looks. So these are the colors that I would like to use for our code challenge. So I easily can go over here um, to where we can find the bootstrap files. I'm gonna click on bootstrap CSS. So I'm gonna control A, select all, and I'm gonna come back to our solution. I'm gonna go into content and we're gonna override we're going to override all these files. So after applying both CSS files, bootstrap CSS and bootstrap min.css from our bootswatch site, and this is how our application looks. And it looks pretty cool. I like it. Okay, the next thing we want to do is to create <clears throat> a class which will represent the model which we used in the form we saw earlier. So I'm going to create a class called request a quote model and I don't want you to see me typing so I'm just gonna paste in those properties so you have contact name address line city state zip code email description now our work here isn't done yet so we want to make sure that we take advantage of the MVC framework and MVC framework has a nice feature which is called the validation attributes and so we're going to add a couple to make sure that when we do fill the form out, um, somebody can't fill in junk. So let's add some, um, some of these attributes um, and then make sure that we get IntelliSense. So some of them are required, display name, string length, data, data type. Um, they're quite self-explanatory. I don't want to spend a lot of time here and I will uh, create another video to explain uh, validation and MVC for framework. So let's move on. All right, we're going to move back to our MVC site. And the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that 
the MVC website has a reference to our business logic. So we're going to right click on references, add a reference. We go to projects, select pacificfencing.core. Now the next thing I'll do is to come into views. We want to update the views or we want to actually create the form uh, for the requested quote. So we'll come into views, home and the index page. Let's get rid of all of this and I will copy and paste some code so you don't have to watch me type. And let me just walk you through what this is here. So our form will look something like this. We have a directive, a model directive at the top, which indicates that we're using the request a quote model, which we just created. We can navigate there. So as you can see, the, the model, which I just added the validation attributes for, you can go back. Um, and this is the title. Uh, we're, we're opening or beginning a new form. We're going to post the elements back to the index action on the home controller. I added a validation summary. So when you hit submit, um, it's actually going to show you if there are any fields which don't meet the requirements of our validation. So it's pretty straightforward. Each, each uh, control um, has a label and then this is the actual text box for the element. Um, I've added a couple of class attributes such as the form control from Bootstrap to make it a little bit more pleasing to the eye. And um, over here as in red, we're going to create a st state helper uh, for our drop down list so that we can actually allow users to select a state. I'm going to add a new folder um, called components and in that folder I'm going to add a new class called state helper. This state helper will effectively hold a list of um, select list items Let's make the static. All right. And then I'm going to I'm going to bring in some code from here. Um, once again, save you guys some time. You don't have to watch me type. OK. All right. So there you go. It's very simple. It's essentially just a list of select list items which comprises of the names of states and the short codes which we'll be using and because of this when we come back to our um, view now we we know that everything's good all right so this is what the form looks like after making those changes to the index page and modifying the content on the home page uh, the next thing we're going to do is to go in and add an action so that when you click submit, it will have the ability to handle and then check to see whether these um, fields are actually filled in or not. Okay, so back inside the MVC site, I click the home controller. I'm going to actually get rid of the about and contact us actions. We don't need those. What I'm going to do next is to add two new actions to this controller and we'll come back to that in a second. So uh, what we have here is another um, action which has an HTTP post attribute decorated. So what will happen is when you click submit, this is the action which will be invoked. The model state will be checked. Um, with this if statement to make sure it's valid. Um, if it isn't, um, we're going to return back to the view model. If it is, uh, then we continue to send the email. We'll come to that code later. And then of course the confirmation page as well. So I'm going to go ahead and create the confirmation page. So I've gone ahead and created our confirmation page here. As I said, it's very simple. Thank you. Your quote has been received. The, the, is the message that a user will be showed after they submit their form. 
If we go back to the browser, we can now illustrate the action of submitting. So once you submit, because of the validation attributes that we added on the model, uh, this now prevents the form from being submitted without any values in there. All right, so we've come to the most important part of our discussion today, and that's talking about the T4 templates that we want to use. So if inside the dialog box, if you type T4 and search, you're going to get two options or more, depending on the type of templates you have installed on your computer. Uh, we're going to use the runtime text templates. Now, a runtime text template is different from the design time because uh, runtime templates are sometimes also called pre-processed text templates. So they will create the code you want when they're compiled, um, and then you can execute them at runtime. So we're going to name this, and, the na and, and keep in mind the extension for this type of file is TT. So we're going to call this request a quote HTML email. All right. And in the code behind, you will, this is what you'll see. So this is something you shouldn't actually edit. Um, you'll see a lot of, you know, generated code here for you. The most important thing is the transform text. So when the template is actually used in code, the method which will be called on this class is called transform text. Okay, so we've created our template, our T4 code generation template. And what we need to do next is to add some code uh, which the template can use to actually generate that HTML and then do what? It's going to inject the values that we select. So let me show you the HTML which the um, email uses. And you know this, this can be anything that you want. So I'm just going to copy and paste that in here. Um, so there isn't, there, there isn't any IntelliSense or anything like that since it's a code generation tool. You can use some some tools like the T4 toolbox to give you some form of IntelliSense, but we're going to skip all of that and we're just going to move on. So here's my HTML and um, inside of my HTML, I have certain code blocks. So you can see here, here's a code block, which is delimited by this less than sign hash equals to, right? Um, and I'm using the uh, request a quote model, which we created, which is this. So it has a description and I want to use uh, the contact name as well. So let's go back into the template. So request a quote description and then um, here is the contact name. So now when this, this template is run and the transform text, the transform text is called this is actually what it's going to spit out for us. So it's going to just call this this dot write method, and then it's going to <clears throat> intersperse the code with the values given from the properties here. Um, there are some additional files that I added, and I just want to walk you through. So in order for there to be a good link, I created a partial class which has the same name as my template code behind. So this is the key here. So request a quote HTML email. This is a partial class. And this is also another partial class. So when it's compiled and it's run, they'll all be combined into one. And this, this partial class has a reference to the property request a quote. And in the constructor, I'm passing in the model and just assigning it to the property. Okay, so I just set a couple of breakpoints in code, and um, in order for us to get a better understanding of how this actually works, let's step through some co through some code. Um, I created an email utility which actually sends the email. So, <clears throat> send email will be called, the model will be passed in. We're going to go and then we're going to create a new mail message right here. Um, first thing we do is to create a new instance of the recode request a quote HTML email passing in the model 
and then we call transform.txt. So this is the key. So we'll have our body, the properties from our model will be interspersed with that HTML we created, and then we'll have our new mail message. We'll then create a new instance of um, SNCP client, and then we'll send the message. So let's take a look at how this goes. All right, let's do this. So for time, I'm not gonna fill in all those forms and I want a big fence click submit all right so uh, the first thing we do is to make sure that the model the, the quest equip model all of the validation attributes that we added they all pass and in this case they do so we move on we want to step into the code here all right so our model um, has all the values that we filled in. And so we're gonna go and uh, once again, get our message. So like I said before, we're gonna create a new instance of this class, this partial class. Let's see if I can find it for you here. Uh, remember, so this is the class we created, right? So this class will be given that new instance of the model and um, then it's gonna go and it's gonna call this transform text and it's gonna try and interpolate these values from the model we just passed in into this HTML forming our new template. Let's go back to our email utility. So we're gonna step over this and we'll come back. So we take a look at our message. Uh, the body is HTML and it has everything that let's see if we can find those values we added um, there you go so you can see i want a big fence is what i typed in the form and uh, the contact name is john doe so it's really straightforward and then i'm going to i'm going to hit continue and i get this lovely email um, as you can see here all right, so some of you might be wondering how I'm actually working out the emails to actually get them to show. So I've installed SMTP for dev. Um, it's on CodePlex. You can find it here. And what this does is essentially just sit in my system tray and it's going to intercept because I pointed my SMTP client, the host to be localhost it actually intercepts all of my incoming emails. And so I can view them just as if somebody had actually emailed them to me. It's a really handy tool. And I would encourage you to download and use whenever you need to work and um, test emails. But essentially it's you know just sitting in my system tray and any email that um, is sent is intercepted and I can view them locally without actually having to set up an external SMTP um, endpoint. All right, so that brings us to the end of uh, this week's code challenge. If you want the code for for this, it's on my GitHub account. Go to .NET Latest Pacific Fencing and um, all the code is available. If you have any questions or comments, I'll leave them below. All right.